Today we're going to be talking about UI Skutai, the largest star in our galaxy that I'm going to place right here in the middle of our own solar system, because why wouldn't I? Here it is. This is how large this humongous star is. And today we're going to create a potentially habitable system in this uh, system of UI Skutai and find out if it actually is feasible and theoretically possible. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. So now that we've actually kind of unofficially destroyed our own solar system because there's a very large, very massive star in the middle uh, of our solar system, or I guess on the side of our solar system, we're going to basically recreate this Assuming that we basically go on a bit of a journey to UI Skutai, and we're going to try to imagine if there are any other potentially habitable planets um, there as well. So, as you can see, our Earth here is completely boiled um, away, or at least the atmosphere has boiled away. Uh, the water is gone as well, and the temperature here on the surface is about 1100 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit too hot, and it's slowly approaching UI Skutai, so it's only going to get worse. So this uh, particular star, even though it's not super massive, it's only about eight and a half masses of the sun. At least that's the um, assumption right now, because um, since this star doesn't have a companion, we don't really know, or we can't really technically measure its exact mass. But we think it's about eight and a half, maybe ten masses of sun. But it is dramatically larger. It's uh, something like five billion times larger than our sun. And this gives it the title of the largest so far uh, discovered star out there. And this is how big it is. This is our sun. This is UI Skutai. Now, this particular star has not always been that big. As a matter of fact, when it was just uh, born, it was very likely similar to this. It was uh, a kind of a massive, large O-type star that um, had a mass of about 30 to maybe 40 masses of the sun. And um, it was very bright, very powerful, very strong, and very rich in metal, meaning that it had a lot of non-hydrogen, non-helium materials, which would suggest that it very likely also had um, planets around it, or some sort of planetary bodies or asteroids or basically rocky stuff. Now, the size here is not very large. If I were to place Sun here right now, here is actually our sun in comparison, so uh, it's not as big as the UI Skutai now. But over time, the hydrogen here was sort of depleted, and uh, only a bit of a hydrogen is left on the inside. And as it started burning helium, it increased in size quite dramatically. So it basically un has undergone a change and uh, expanded to the point where it's now this big. So this is the old UI Skutai, this is the new UI Skutai on the right. And it will actually stay in this particular form for the next uh, few million years, very likely for at least a million years, but the stellar evolutionary models are not particularly clear, uh, since we don't really know, or since we can't really classify this particular star very easily. Um, it doesn't seem to be a hypergiant, it's more of a supergiant, it's not losing a lot of mass. It lost about a half of its mass, but it's not losing as much as some of the other stars, but nevertheless, we think that um, it's very likely that this star will then, after the helium um, has been expanded, it will burn lithium, carbon, oxygen, neon, and silicon um, for the next few million years. And at the end, it will just have iron left. And when it only has iron left after a few million years, it's very likely going to go supernova. And what will be left behind is probably going to be... Let's see what's left behind, actually. And actually, it seems to be exploding completely and disappearing entirely. That's very interesting. Well, it's very likely that they're going to disappear completely in a type 2 supernova, or following the type 2 supernova will probably become a neutron star. So there's some possibilities for it to become a neutron star, very unlikely to become a black hole. Anyway, let's actually see if we can maybe create a habitable system here. And let's just see where this habitable system would be located if we actually did have UI Skutai in the center. So when it was an O-type star, when it was much younger, much more powerful, much more massive, um, any kind of habitable planets would be on the outskirts. It would be kind of farther away, uh, but as it expanded and became 
even more bright in a sense due to its uh, higher volume. Um, the habitable zone expanded even further, but because it lost so much mass, those planets may have moved away even farther away. So um, here, let's actually see how far we need to place things by enabling the zones. There we go. So we need to place our planets in this area. So let's place a few randomly generated planets. We're going to place three rocky planets. We're going to place one more here. We're also going to place random gas giants around somewhere in all of these areas. And this is just kind of to simulate and just to see what uh, might be actually happening inside of the solar system. So um, when this star lost a lot of its mass, many of these objects would actually change their orbits, but also would probably have orbits that are a lot more eccentric. So let's actually maybe give them a lot of eccentricity as well. And so here is a slightly more realistic look at what UI Skitai system might look like. So due to the loss of mass, many of these planets very likely acquired wider, more eccentric orbits. But some of them might actually be in the, still be in a habitable zone. So like, let's just look at ones in the green area. Let's pick one. Let's, this is a gas giant. So let's find a, let's see if we can find a terrestrial planet that's, that's there. Uh, this is not a terrestrial planet either. And here's actually one. This, this one is called Vestv or Vestv or I don't, I'm not really sure what to call it, but here we go. This is what it looks like. Let's slow down a little bit and um, take a look at its surface. So what we have here is a planet with a very high temperature of 148 degrees Celsius, but surprisingly liquid water. It actually has liquid water. And uh, even though it's not really habitable, it might become habitable in the next few hundreds of years when it reaches the area of its orbit within the habitable zone. So as you can see, it's going to pass through this green area here. That's the so-called Goldilocks zone or habitable area. And there the water is actually going to be liquid. And for maybe, I don't know, a few decades, there might be habitable situation. So you might be able to survive on this planet. Here, it's going to be a little bit colder, and then it's going to come back here and become super hot. Uh, so it's very likely going to last for quite a long time. So because of these orbits being so much longer now than they used to be, it's actually going to last for many, many years. And one single year on this particular planet is close to about 13,000 years. So these are long, long years. Now, whether these planets actually exist in this area is another question, but if they do exist and if they actually have these orbital parameters, it's very interesting, or it will be very interesting to see what kind of a dynamics are on these planets. So on uh, Vestv, uh, we now have reached the um, perfect temperature. Look at that, surface temperature of three degrees, but it's actually so cooling down now dramatically because I think it doesn't have any atmosphere. So we do need to give it some atmosphere, just so that it's a little bit more habitable. So um, it's currently going to be slowly cooling down and every single year it's going to become more and more uh, friendly to life, more and more habitable. And as a matter of fact, it's going to become more and more Earth-like. It's Earth similarity will very likely increase with time here. But because of its eccentric orbit and because it actually passes through a lot of other uh, interesting areas such as this blue area where it's going to be completely frozen and this red area where everything's going to be too hot. It's unlikely that there's going to be any life that can form here. Although, you know, it's not impossible. But anyway, so let's uh, let's actually see um, what would happen to some of the planets that were very likely closer to the star. So just similar to how our sun is going to become a uh, giant one day, this star was also much smaller, had planets closer to it, and those planets may ha have orbits similar to this. So an orbit that is still eccentric, but that actually comes a lot closer to the star and uh, moves away at a distance of about, what is it, like 20, 25 astronomical units, which is close to the orbit of Neptune, but then it actually comes really, really close to the star um, at its periapsis. So here, no matter where you are, in your orbit, you're going to experience quite a lot of heat. 
So this planet and also most of the major planets in UIS Qtai system might actually have these types of orbits and kind of look like this. So this is very likely what we would see around UIS Qtai if we were to go there. But if there are any objects, if there are any planets at a farther away distance, uh, basically within this habitable zone, then it's possible that we might find something that even looks like this. So this is that Vest planet that we've created just now. And look at that, it's actually almost perfect. It's temperature is dropping quite dramatically every year. And at some point it's going to be a perfect paradise for at least a few decades. And then it's going to become too cold. And as you can see, after about 500 years, it actually reached a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius on average. Now, how long will it stay in this orbit? And how long will it have this temperature? Well, quite a long time, actually. It's going to be in this part for another 500 years. Then it's going to be here for a few thousand years. And then it's going to come back here where it's going to have that comfortable 20 degree temperature for another 500 years. Uh, so let's see how cool this planet actually gets. So let's accelerate time a little bit more and find out what this planet is like when it's farther away from UIS Qtai. Now, once again, this is just a hypothetical scenario and it's possible that there are no planets that far away from the star, but um, you never know. For all we know, UIS Qtai might be a very rich world filled with various planets, including similar to something similar to Vest, Vest, Vest TV, that is now a frozen world with minus 51 degrees Celsius on the surface and it will stay this way for a few thousand years. Now, since I've created the system, 4,600 years have passed. So, yeah. So, living on these planets would be quite interesting and quite unusual. But since UIS Qtai is going to stay in this phase for a few million years, it's possible that um, during that time, some sort of a really extreme type of a life might actually evolve on some of these planets and might even become intelligent resilient and possibly even escape the system and move somewhere else more comfortable. But as you can see, this particular planet is going to stay frozen for quite some time now. And its uh, Earth similarity ha has actually dropped just a little bit because of the temperature, but it still has about a 70% chance to have life on the surface here, mostly because it has atmosphere, water, possibly liquid water inside of the um, of the planet underneath the ice shell, and it might also have magnetosphere necessary to protect itself from the flares from the beautiful, powerful, and magnificent UIS Qtai over there, which is actually a very, very far away distance. Because we're currently about 1,000 astronomical units away from the star, which is actually super, super far. That's about thousand times the distance from Earth from the Sun. And well, anyway, so that's all I really wanted to do in this video. I wanted to kind of see if I can create UIS Qtai system, if I can make, potentially make a habitable system here. And also um, if we can just talk about what could be present here and what will happen to UIS Qtai in the future when it sort of goes supernova and we'll actually do this one more time in a few seconds. But the important thing is that because it's actually a star that has very high metallicity, we know almost for a fact that it's probably going to have various planets orbiting around it. We don't know if this is going to be the orbits that we'll see here, and we don't know if there is a lot of gas giants, we don't really know if there is a lot of uh, terrestrial planets, but we know that they're definitely there, or almost definitely there. It's very likely that they're actually there. What kind of planets it has is still a mystery, because this star is so, so far away from us. And maybe one day we'll actually have a powerful enough telescope to see what's in the solar system and to discover what kind of mysteries there are here. For now though, we're going to decelerate time and imagine that this is a few million years in the future and the star is about to go supernova. And there you go, UIS Qtai supernova that we'll probably get to see several million years in the future. And as you can see, all of the planets are now being burned into crispy, gaseous objects because of the ridiculous amount of energy that has just been released. So after the supernova, there might be nothing left except for the tiny object in the middle, which might be actually, huh, 
I don't even know what that is. This is definitely not a neutron star. This is a very large, tremendously large white dwarf. I'm not sure what happened there. Possibly a bug. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And you know what? Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And it looks like not all of the planets actually got destroyed. Some of these are doing just fine. Except, of course, they're filled with tremendous radiation from the supernova. So they're not going to uh, have much in terms of life left on them.